Section 17 of A State of the Union Addresses, 1837 to 1844. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. John Tyler, December 3, 1844, Part 2. Other considerations of a controlling character influenced the course of the executive. The treaty which had thus been negotiated had failed to receive the ratification of the Senate. One of the chief objections was, which was urged against it was found to consist in the fact that the question of annexation had not been submitted to the ordeal of public opinion in the United States however unintentable such an objection was esteemed to be in view of the unquestionable power of the executive to negotiate the treaty and the great and lasting interests involved in the question i felt it to be my duty to submit the whole subject to congress as the best expounders of popular sentiment no definitive action having been taken on the subject by congress the question referred itself directly to the decision of the states and people the great popular election which has just terminated afforded the best opportunity of ascertaining the will of the states and the people upon it pending that issue it became the imperative duty of the executive to inform mexico that the question of annexation was still before the american people and that until their decision was pronounced any serious invasion of texas would be regarded as an attempt to forestall their judgment and could not be looked upon with indifference i am most happy to inform you that no such invasion has taken place and i trust that whatever your action may be upon it mexico will see the importance of deciding the matter by a resort to peaceful expedients in preference to those of arms the decision of the people and the states on this great and interest subject has been decisively manifested the question of annexation has been presented nakedly to their consideration but the treaty itself all collateral and incidental issues which were calculated to divide and distract the public councils were carefully avoided these were left to the wisdom of the future to determine it presented i repeat the isolated question of annexation and in that form it has been submitted to the ordeal of public sentiment a controlling majority of the people and a large majority of the states have declared in favor of immediate annexation instructions have thus come up to both branches of congress from their respective constituents in terms of the most emphatic it is the will of both the people and the states that texas shall be annexed to the union promptly and immediately it may be hoped that in carrying into execution the public will thus declare all collateral issues may be avoided future legislators can best decide as to the number of states which should be formed out of the territory when the time has arrived for deciding that question so with all others by the treaty the united states assumed the payment of the debts of texas to an amount not exceeding ten million dollars to be paid with the exceptions of a sum falling short of four hundred thousand dollars exclusively out of the proceeds of the sales of her public lands we could not with honor take the lands without assuming the full payment of all incumbencies upon them nothing has occurred since your last session to induce a doubt that the dispositions of taxes remain unaltered no imitation of an altered determination on the part of her government and people has been furnished to the executive she still desires to throw herself under the protection of our laws and to partake of the blessings of our federative system while every american interest would seem to require it 
the extension of our coastwise and foreign trade to an amount almost incalculable the enlargement of the market for our manufactures a constantly growing market for our agricultural productions safety to our frontiers and additional strength and stability to the union these are the results which would rapidly develop themselves upon the consummation of the measure of annexation in such event i will not doubt that mexico would find her true interest to consist in meeting the advances of this government in spirit of amenity nor do i apprehend any serious complaint from any other quarter no sufficient grounds exists for such complaint we should interfere in no respect with the rights of any other nation there cannot be gathered from the act any design on our part to do so with their possessions on this continent we have interposed no impediments in the way of such acquisitions of territory large and extensive as many of them are as the leading powers of europe have made from time to time in every part of the world we seek no conquest made by war no intrigue will have been resorted to or acts of diplomacy essayed to accomplish the annexation of texas free and independent herself she asks to be received into our union it is a question for our decision whether she shall be received or not the two governments having already agreed through their respective organs on the terms of annexation i would recommend their adoption by congress in the form of a joint resolution or act to be perfected that made binding on the two countries when adopted in like manner by the government of texas in order that the subject being be fully presented in all its bearings the correspondence which has taken place in reference to it since the adjournment of congress between the united states texas and mexico is herewith transmitted the amendments proposed by the senate to the convention concluded between the united states and mexico on the twentieth of november eighteen forty three have been transmitted through our minister for the concurrence of the mexican government but although urged thereto no action has yet been had on the subject nor has any answer been given which would authorize a favorable conclusion in the future the decree of september eighteen forty three in relation to the retail trade the order for the expulsion of foreigners and that of a more recent date in regard to passports all which are considered as in violation of the treaty of amity and commerce between the two countries have led to a correspondence of considerable length between the minister for foreign relations and our representatives at mexico but without any satisfactory result they remain still unadjusted and many and serious inconveniences have already resulted to our citizens in consequence of them questions growing out of the act of disarming a body of texan troops under the command of major snively by an officer in the service of the united states acting under the orders of our government and the forcible entry into the custom house at briolari's landing on red river by certain citizens of the united states and taking away therefrom the goods seized by the collector of the customs as forfeited under the laws of texas have been adjusted so far as the powers of the executive extend the correspondence between the two governments in reference to both subjects will be found amongst the accompanying documents it contains a full statement of all the facts and circumstances with the view taken on both sides and the principles on which the questions have been adjusted it remains for congress to make the necessary appropriation to carry the arrangement into effect which i respectively recommend the greatly improved condition of the treasury affords a subject for general congratulation the paralysis which had fallen on trade and commerce 
and which subjected the government to the necessity of resorting to loans and the issue of treasury notes to a large amount has passed away and the payment of upward of seven million dollars on account of the interest and in redemption of more than five million dollars of the public debt which falls due on the first of january next and setting apart upward of two million dollars for the payment of outstanding treasury notes and meeting an installment of debts of the corporate cities of the district of columbia an estimated surplus of upward of seven million dollars over and above the existing appropriations will remain in the treasury at the close of the fiscal year should the treasury notes continue outstanding as heretofore the surplus will be considerably augmented although all interest has ceased upon them and the government has invited their return to the treasury yet they remain outstanding affording great facilities to commerce and establishing the fact that under a well-regulated system of finance the government has resources within itself which render it independent in time of need not only of private loans but also of bank facilities the only remaining subject of regret is that the remaining stocks of the government do not fall due at an earlier day since their redemption would be entirely within its control as it is it may be well worthy the consideration of congress whether the law establishing the sinking fund under the operation of which the debts of the revolution and last war with great britain were to a great extent extinguished should not with proper modifications so as to prevent an accumulation of surpluses and limited in amount to a specific sum be reenacted such provision which would authorize the government to go into the market for a purchase of its own stock on fair terms would serve to maintain its credit at the highest point and prevent to a great extent those fluctuations in the price of its securities which might under other circumstances affect its credit no apprehension of this sort is at this moment entertained since the stocks of the government which but two years ago were offered for sale to capitalists at home and abroad at a depreciation and could find no purchasers are now greatly above par in the hands of the holders but a wise and prudent forecast admonishes us to place beyond the reach of contingency the public credit it must also be a matter of unmingled gratification that under the existing financial system resting upon the act of seventeen eighty nine and the resolution of eighteen sixteen the currency of the country has attained a state of perfect soundness and the rates of exchange between the different parts of the union which in eighteen forty one denoted by their enormous amount of the great depreciation and in fact worthlessness of the currency in most of the states are now reduced to little more than a me the mere expense of transporting specie from place to place and the risk of incident to the operation in a new country like that of the united states where so many inducements are held out for speculation the depositories of the surplus revenue consisting of banks of any description when it reaches any considerable amount require the closest vigilance on the part of the government all banking institutions under whatever denomination they may pass are governed by an almost exclusive regard to the interest of the stockholders that interest consists in the augmentation of profits in the form of dividends and a large surplus revenue trusted to their custody is but too apt to lead to excessive loans and to extravagant large issues of paper as a necessary consequence prices are normally increased and the speculative mania very soon seizes upon the public mind a fictitious state of prosperity for a season exists and 
in the language of the day money becomes plenty contracts are entered into by individuals resting on this substantial state of things but the delusion speedily passes away and the country is overrun with indebtedness so weighty as to overwhelm many and to visit every department of industry with great and ruinous embarrassment the greatest vigilance becomes necessary on the part of government to guard against this state of things the depositories must be given distinctly to understand that the favors of the government will be altogether withdrawn or substantially diminished if its revenue shall be regarded as additions to their banking capital or as the foundation of an enlarged circulation the government through its revenue has at all times important part to perform in connection with the currency and it greatly depends upon its vigilance and care whether the country be involved in embarrassments similar to those which it has recently to encounter or aided by the action of the treasury shall be preserved in a sound and healthy condition the dangers to be guarded against are greatly augmented by too large a surplus of revenue when that surplus greatly exceeds the amount what shall be required by a wise and prudent forecast to meet unforeseen contingencies the legislature itself may come to be seized with a disposition to indulge in extravagant appropriations to objects many of which may as most probably would be found to conflict with the constitution a fancied expediency is elevated above constitutional authority and a reckless and wasteful extravagance but too certainly follows the important power of taxation which when exercised in its most restricted form is a burden on labor and production is resorted to under various pretexts for purposes having no affinity to the motives which dictated its grant and the extravagance of government stimulates individual extravagance under the spirit of a wild and ill-regarded speculation involves one and all of its unfortunate results in view of such fatal consequences it may be laid down as an axiom rounded in moral and political truth that no greater taxes should be imposed than are necessary for an economical administration of the government and that whatever exists beyond should be reduced or modified this doctrine does in no way conflict with the exercise of a sound discrimination in the selection of the articles to be taxed which a due regard to the public weal would at all times suggest to the legislative mind it leaves the range of selection undefined and such selection should always be made with an eye to the great interests of the country composed as is the union of separate and independent states a patriotic legislator will not fail in consulting the interests of the part to adopt such course as will be best calculated to advance the harmony of the whole and thus ensure the permanency in the policy of the government without which all efforts to advance the public prosperity are vain and fruitless this great and vitally important task rests with congress and the executive can do no more than recommend the general principles which should govern in its execution i refer you to the report of the secretary of war for an exhibition of the condition of the army and recommend to you as well worthy your best consideration many of the suggestions it contains the secretary in no degree exaggerates the great importance of pressing forward without delay in the work of erecting and finishing the fortifications to which he particularly alludes much has been done toward placing our cities and roadsteads in a state of security against the hazards of hostile attack within the last four years but considering the new elements which have been of late years employed in the propelling of ships 
and the formidable implements of destruction which have been brought into service we can not be too active or vigilant in preparing and perfecting the means of defence i refer you also to his report for a full statement on the condition of the indian tribes within our jurisdiction the executive has abated no effort in carrying into effect the well-established policy of the government which contemplates a removal of all tribes residing within the limits of the several states beyond those limits and it is now enabled to congratulate the country at the prospect of an early consummation of this object many of the tribes have already made great progress in the arts of civilized life and though the operation of the schools established among them aided by the efforts of the pious men of various religious denominations who devote themselves to the task of their improvement we may fondly hope that the remains of the formidable tribes which were once masters of this country will in their transition from the savage state to a condition of refinement and cultivation add another bright trophy to adorn the labors of a well-directed philanthropy the accompanying report of the secretary of the navy will explain to you the situation of that branch of the service the present organization of the department imparts to its operations great efficiency but i concur fully in the proprietary of a division of the bureau of construction equipment and increase and repairs into two bureaus the subjects as now arranged are incongruous and require a certain extent information and qualifications altogether dissimilar the operations of the squadron on the coast of africa have been conducted with all attention to the object which led to its origination and i am happy to say that the officers and crews have enjoyed the best possible health under the system adopted by the officer in command it is believed that the united states is the only nation which has by its laws subjected to the punishment of death as pirates those who may be engaged in the slave trade a similar enactment on the part of other nations would not fail to be attended by beneficial results in consequence of the difficulties which have existed in the way of securing titles for the necessary grounds operations have not yet been commenced toward the establishment of the navy yard at memphis so soon as the title is perfected no further delay will be permitted to intervene it is well worthy of your consideration whether congress should not direct the establishment of a rope walk in connection with the contemplated navy yard as a measure not only of economy but as highly useful and necessary the only establishment of the sort now connected with the service is located at boston and the advantages of a similar establishment convenient to the hemp growing region must be apparent to all the report of the secretary presents other matters to your consideration of an important character in connection with the service in referring you to the accompanying report of the postmaster general it affords me continued cause of gratification to be able to advert to the fact that the affairs of the department for the last four years have been so conducted as from its unaided resources to meet its large expenditures on my coming into office a debt of nearly five hundred thousand dollars existed against the department which congress discharged by an appropriation from the treasury the department on the fourth of march next will be found under the management of its present efficient head free of debt or embarrassment which could only have been done by the observance and practice of the greatest vigilance and economy the laws have contemplated th throughout that department should be self-sustained but it may be necessary with the wisest regard to the public interests to introduce amendments and alterations in the system 
there is a strong desire manifested in many quarters so to alter the tariff of letter postage as to reduce the amount of tax present imposed should such a measure be carried into effect to the full extent desired it can not well be doubted but that for the first years of its operation a diminished revenue would be collected the supply of which would be necessarily contribute to a charge upon the treasury whether such a result would be desirable it will be for congress in its wisdom to determine it may be it may in general be asserted as true that radical alterations in any system should rather be brought about gradually than by sudden changes and by pursuing this prudent policy in the reduction of letter postage the department might still sustain itself through the revenue which would accrue by the increase of letters the state and condition of the public treasury has heretofore been such as to have precluded the recommendation of any material change the difficulties upon this head have however ceased and a larger discretion is now left to the government i cannot too strongly urge the policy of authorizing the establishment of a line of steamships regularly to ply between this country and foreign ports and upon our own waters for the transportation of the mail the example of the british government is well worthy of imitation in this respect the belief is strongly entertained that the emollients arising from the transportation of mail matter to foreign countries would op operate its of itself as an inducement to cause individual enterprise to undertake that branch of the task and the remuneration of the government would consist in the addition readily made to our steam navy in case of emergency by the ship so employed should this suggestion meet your approval the propriety of placing such ships under the command of experienced officers of the navy will not escape your observation the application of steam to the purposes of naval warfare we congeniently recommends an extensive steam marine as important in estimating the defenses of the country fortunately this may be obtained by us for a great extent without incurring any large amount of expenditure steam vessels to be engaged in the transportation of the mails on our principal water courses lakes and ports of our coast could also be so constructed as to be efficient at war vessels when needed and would of themselves constitute a formidable force in order to repel attacks from abroad we cannot be blind to the fact that other nations have already added large numbers of steamships to their naval armaments and that this new and powerful agent is destined to revolutionize the condition of the world it becomes the united states therefore looking to their security to adopt a similar policy and the plan suggested will enable them to do so at a small comparative cost i take the greatest pleasure in bearing testimony to the zeal and untiring industry which has characterized the conduct of the members of the executive cabinet each in his appropriate sphere has rendered me the most efficient aid in carrying on the government and it will not i trust appear out of place for me to bear this public testimony the cardinal objects which should ever be held in view by those entrusted with the administration of public affairs are rigidly and without favor or affection so to interpret the national will expressed in the laws as that injustice should be done to none justice to all this has been the rule upon which they have acted and thus it is believed that few cases if any exists wherein our fellow citizens who from time to time have been drawn to the seat of government for the settlement of their transactions with the government have gone away dissatisfied 
where the testimony has been perfected and was esteemed satisfactory their claims have been promptly audited and this in the absence of all favoritism or partiality the government which is not just to its own people can neither claim their affection nor the respect of the world at the same time the closest attention has been paid to those matters which relate more immediately to the great concern of the country order and efficiency in each branch of the public service have prevailed accompanied by a system of the most rigid responsibility on the part of the receiving and dispersing agents the fact an illustration of the truth of this remark deserves to be noticed that the revenues of the government amounting in the last four years upward of a hundred and twenty million dollars have been collected and dispersed through the numerous governmental agents without the loss by default of any amount worthy of serious commentary the appropriations made by congress for the improvement of the rivers of the west and of the harbors of the lakes are in a course of judicious expenditure under suitable agents and are destined it is to be hoped to realize all the benefits designed to be accomplished by congress i cannot however sufficiently impress upon congress the great importance of withholding appropriations from improvements which are not ascertained by previous examination and survey to be necessary for the shelter and protection of trade from the dangers of stores and tempests without this precaution the expenditures are too apt to inure to the benefit of individuals without reference to the only consideration which can render them constitutional the public interest and the general good i can not too earnestly urge upon you the interest of this district over which by the constitution congress has exclusive jurisdiction it would be deeply to be regretted should there be at any time ground to complain of the neglect on the part of a community which detached as it is from the parental care of the states of virginia and maryland can only expect aid from congress as its local legislator among the subjects which claim your attention is the prompt organization of an asylum for the insane who may be found from time to time sojourning within the district such course is also demanded by considerations which apply to branches of the public service for the necessities in this behalf i invite your particular attention to the report of the secretary of the navy i have thus gentlemen of the two houses of congress presented you a true and faithful picture of the condition of public affairs both foreign and domestic the wants of the public service are made known to you and matters of no ordinary importance are urged upon your consideration shall i not be permitted to congratulate you on the happy auspices under which you have assembled and at the important change in the condition of things which have occurred in the last three years during that period questions with foreign powers of vital importance to the peace of our country have been settled and adjusted a desolating and wasting war with savage tribes has been brought to a close the internal tranquillity of the country threatened by agitating questions has been preserved the credit of the government which had experienced a temporary embarrassment has been thoroughly restored its coffers which for a season were empty have been replenished a currency nearly uniform in its value has taken the place of one depreciated and almost worthless commerce and manufacturers which had suffered in common with every other interest have once more revived and the whole country exhibits an aspect of prosperity and happiness trade and barter no longer governed by a wild and speculative mania rest upon a solid and substantial footing 
and the rapid growth of our cities in every direction bespeaks most strongly the favorable circumstances by which we are surrounded my happiness in the retirement which shortly awaits me is the ardent hope which i experience that this state of prosperity is neither deceptive nor destined to be short-lived and that measures which have not yet received its sanction but which i cannot but regard as closely connected with the honor the glory and still more enlarged prosperity of the country are destined at an early day to receive the approval of congress under these circumstances and with with these anticipations i shall most gladly leave to others more able than myself the noble and pleasing task of sustaining the public prosperity i shall carry with me into retirement the gratifying reflection that as my sole object throughout has been to advance the public good i may not entirely have failed in accomplishing it and this gratification is heightened in no small degree by the fact that when under a deep and abiding sense of duty i have found myself constrained to resort to the qualified veto it has neither been followed by disapproval on the part of the people nor weakened in any degree their attachment to that great conservative feature of our government End of section fifteen recording by Linda Marie Nielsen Vancouver BC End of State of the Union Addresses eighteen thirty seven to eighteen forty four